Mr. Blinken, assuming it's not classified, can you tell us where you are today? Uh, yes, I'm uh, at the State Department. Oh, couldn't couldn't be bothered to come down here and see Congress. All right, that's great. Uh, hey, my sir, excuse me, sir. My understanding is that con that the House is not in session, and that's why the I, session I'm, is. Business. I'm right here, Secretary. So is the Chairman. So is the Ranking Member. We're the chairman, in. Uh, would like we're to here, me, I Mr. Chairman. Correct. Reclaiming my time. Did state at any point in the evacuation process block American citizens from leaving Afghanistan? No, we did not. None. Your testimony before Congress is, is that state didn't block any. American citizens leaving to Afghanistan. To the contrary, my officers, men and women, ran into the building from around the world to help it's, Americans get out. It's a simple yes or no. I heard you do it with Mr. Connolly. You can do it with me. Yes or no? I'm, I just want to uh, clarify. You didn't block anybody. State didn't did block any block Americans. Any, no. Okay. Uh, they were there to help Americans right. get out. How many not Afghans not, not meeting the qualifications of SIV have been brought to the United States? Prior to... I, I want to Go know ahead, how please. many Afghan ahead, citizens came to the United States that had not met the qualifications for special immigrant visa. We're in the process no, of no, no. How going many? through. How the, many? How I, many I, did I, you bring? You were just at Dulles. How many did you bring? We have. We will have by the end of the month. We will have brought a total of pro approximately sixty thousand that have uh, not met the SIV the process. Some, some of those will be. Some of those will have been through the SIV process. All of them, regardless of SIV status, will have gone through rigorous security checks. First, at the transit it'd point nice outside we, of the United It'd be States, nice if that was done the before States. we brought these people to the United States of America. Mr. Secretary, are Afghan refugees required to be vaccinated for COVID before coming to the United States of America? Uh, they are vaccinated in the United States uh, before, they are, before they are resettled into the United States. There are none of these uh, Afghan citizens that are allowed to leave these, these uh, resettlement communities, Fort Dix, Dulles, et cetera, that are allowed to leave at any time they want, none of them are leaving unless they are vaccinated for COVID. Is that, is that your testimony? They're, te they're, they're tested for COVID and vaccinated for COVID. Vaccinated before they leave? That's my understanding. All right, thank you, Mr. Is it the policy of the United States of America to take hard-earned tax dollars and pay terrorist organizations? Uh, it is not. It is not. So your testimony earlier was is that we're sending taxpayer dollars to Afghanistan right now for humanitarian relief. Who are we sending that to? To NGOs and to the United Nations agencies who are using that assistance, not to the Afghan government. Not to the, not to the Afghan, the Taliban government. How are you accounting for that? How are you making sure that the Afghan, the Taliban government is, is, is not receiving that? As we do around the world in places of conflict where we provide humanitarian assistance, working through UN, uh, working through uh, NGOs with long tested methods to make sure that right. the assistance All right, I got goes it. to the people who need it, not to the government in question. Is it your understanding that over the past 20 years, the United States taxpayers have paid Pakistan, who has then used that money uh, to support the Taliban, the Haqqani Network, ISIS-K, Khorasan Group, et cetera, for the past 20 years? Is that, is that not true? Uh, there's a long history that we should all look at together. Right. Uh, about uh, the involvement of Pakistan. So I would say that we should no longer pay Pakistan and we should pay India.